slide, title slide, The Way to My Heavenly Home. It's been on my heart to start a small series on the way, the way that will lead us, different aspects of the way. Enter the way, follow the narrow way, what is it like to walk on the way to heaven? So that we will be encouraged to focus on our destination. So let's turn to slide number one. Start with John chapter 14, one, two, six, and I'm not going to um, tell you anything new, but I'm going to refresh your memory on the basic, on the essentials, and on what is really very important for our salvation experience. Do not be worried and upset, Jesus told them. Believe in God and believe also in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house, and I'm going to prepare a place for you. I would not tell you this if it were not so. And after I go, I prepare a place for you. I will come back and take you to myself so that you will be where I am. We could stop there and just that part is really good, isn't it? It's really comforting. You know, do you know, you know, Jesus says, the way that leads to the place where I am going. Thomas said to him, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way to get there? Jesus answered him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one goes to the Father except by me. Amen? It's a bit unfortunate because there's divisions in chapters in the Bible because when it starts with do not be worried and upset, it refers to what has been said in chapter 13. Uh, when Jesus was talking about, uh, he washed the disciples' feet, he's giving his life, he's going to be betrayed, he's going to be surrendered to the, to the Gentiles, he will suffer. And then he says something like, my children, I shall not be with you very much longer. So that takes place in chapter 13. Now it comes, do not be worried and upset. Let not your heart be troubled by that. Why does Jesus address their troubled hearts with the solution scheme is quite simple. Don't let your heart be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. That's the cure for your, for your worries. So why, why is it that he's using only like the, this kind of uh, words to, to, to quiet their, their heavy hearts? Because they had the lack of faith. Their faith was not the, the genuine faith that Jesus was looking at. And this is not only addressing the disciples, but it's addressing the Jews uh, generally. Because the Jews, it's from their culture. It's like from the Philippines. You grew up in a Christian or Catholic culture. I mean, in my place, we grew up in a Catholic culture. You just grew up taking for granted, you know a lot of things already from God. God is a spirit, there's a trinity, uh, Jesus is the savior of the world. You, you know all of these things and you believe it, you heard it in school, uh, you memorize things, you, you learn by heart and things, so it gets into part of yourself. So the Jews were like that. They were believing God because that's we Jews believe in God. There's a God and we believe in it. So, but their, their faith was a religious or cultural faith, like many of us come from that. And maybe some of you still have this kind, this kind of faith. It was not a faith by personal appropriation. My faith, I, now I know, I have discovered, I tasted the Lord, I am saved. I believe that Jesus died for my sin. You see, I, I remember when I was young in school, and Jesus was the Savior of the world. I grew up with that. He was the Savior of the world, but he had not been my Savior until the day when I heard the gospel message and I was born again, then he became my savior. And that's the experience of, of many of us. It's like Jesus, if we want to paraphrase a bit what he is saying, says, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, and yet you don't see him. You believe in the God that you don't see. So now believe in me in the same way. Believe in me. And then and, and saying that, Jesus also, pay attention to that, is claiming equality with God. 
says, believe in God, believe also in me, in the same way. So it's, it's, the, it's of the same thing. Their faith had no real power of their life because it was a religious, cultural faith and not a faith of appropriation. He says, I'm going to prepare a place for you in my father's house. So now we're talking about another location, another place, or another dimension, or whatever you want to call it. They were here. I'm going away. I'm going to prepare a place, some place, somewhere in time. We'll see again. I'm going to prepare something for you. So that's another, we're talking about another location that is not that location. And another thing that I, you can observe is like, if Jesus says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. If you have guests coming to your house or someone writes you six months past, he says, I will come, today's November 6th, I will come to visit you on November 9, 2016. Will you prepare a place for them six months past? No, you will prepare a place for them when they confirm they have their tickets, they are landing on the 9 in the morning and uh, they are going to sleep at your place 9. Maybe on the 8 you will prepare the place because now it is sure that it's coming. So Jesus approached you and I that we will be there with a certainty. I'm going to prepare a place for you. Isn't that wonderful when you think about it? It's like a, it's, it's like a certainty. He's confident that we will arrive there. Amen? Jesus is confident that you will make it to heaven. That's important for you and that's important for me. There are many rooms. Some Bible version says mansions, but it's actually place to stay. That's all what it is. But because we know the character of God, we know the creativity of God. We know the majesty of God. It's okay to think that there will be mansion in heaven because this is going to be provided by God for his beloved. So whatever uh, dwelling place there will be, it will be wonderful. Amen. Yes, it will be wonderful. It will be wonderful. Hallelujah. There is room in heaven for all of us. Says, oh no, but we will be too many. My house will be small like the house in Hong Kong. No, it will not be. <laughs> there will be room for everybody. Hallelujah. This is wonderful. Then it says, I will come back and take you to myself. That's God's intention. That is his desire. That's what he is after. When he died on the cross, that's, that's his goal right there. I will come back. I will take you, 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 you to myself so that you will be where I am. Amen to that. He's coming to take you personally. And the take you to myself, uh, and the Hebrew, I like to, to research that because it adds some of the meaning. It means to receive near, something that is by associations, you know, like we belong together, we association intimate act of relation that's what is coming he's coming for people who are intimate with him he's coming for people who has a relation with him he's coming for people that he cares for and he is going to bring us near to himself that is wonderful hallelujah that is wonderful and this is the also the entire focus of heaven you know sometimes we 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 talk about the destination the goal heaven but heaven is heaven only because of Jesus if you remove Jesus from heaven there's there's no heaven I mean there's you, you lose you, you lose the sense of of heaven the lamb that was slain that is alive the glory the light there will be no light there because the glory of God will shine over there so Jesus we will be with him the entire focus of heaven is to be reunited with Jesus. So try to refocus on that starting today. Try to refocus on that when you take of heaven, when you take of the future, when you take of, of, of the glory to come. Don't only see uh, there will be no more tears, there will be... So it's good. It, these are all added benefits. But the big thing that you need to keep in focus, you will see Jesus. 
you will sit at the table with Jesus, you will be with Jesus. That's, that's the thing. And we will discover Jesus, uh, who he is. He will, we, we will know him as he has known us. Heaven is heaven not because of the gold, streets of gold, uh, not only but because of the pearly gates or the presence of angels. Heaven is heaven because Jesus is there. So be encouraged this morning because as he is preparing a place for you, he is also through this journey that you will start. He says, I am the way. No one can come to the Father but by me. As you are on the way, he is also preparing you for that place. So he's prepared a place, but he's preparing you for that place, okay? It's like, okay, if you would bring a beggar into your home. I, I don't know, maybe a better story than that. I, I, I said it in the past, but it's a long time ago. We used to welcome two young girls in our homes that the father was a drunken man in my hometown. And we would bring them to spend weekends with us and take them to church. And they had fleas. Lies? Okay, lies. Okay, okay. Sorry for my English. <laughs> they had lies. So the first thing we would do when they would come home, they would, they would enter the home, there was a small kitchen on the left, and we had a special shampoo against lies because we didn't want our children to be infected. So we says, okay, wash your hair right there. So. I'm saying this because it's, it's a s similar something. It's like as we are invited to there and Jesus says, I am preparing a place for you. As you are going there, he's going to clean you up, prepare you, and make you ready to, enjoy, to enter and to, uh, to enjoy. He's sanctifying us, making us to become like him. So that's, that's important and that's, uh, that, that we know that. Jesus says, you know the way that leads to the place where I am going. And Thomas immediately replies, Lord, we do not know where you are going. How can we know the way uh, to get there? And in a way, I, I says, I'm surprised that Jesus says to him, you know the way. Because in fact, my understanding is that it was impossible for them to fully uh, understand what it means that that way and everything except through a revelation of God because Jesus had not been raised from the dead and had not ascended to heaven imagine the scene I was thinking about that it's really glorious you are just like yourself you have walked with Jesus and one day before your very eyes Jesus is taken up wow Think about it. It's like we are so used to read it. You read this verse and you, you just don't wow anymore. But this is a really a wow moment. Have you ever seen someone lifted to heaven like this? I've never seen something like that in my life. So why, why did Jesus... Why, let me try to ask my, my grammar correct. Why did Jesus not just disappear? to heaven he could have because he disappeared uh, from the door and he was with them and then he was not with them he could have disappeared why was it so important that 40 days later they would with their own eyes witness Jesus taken up to up there they didn't see the destination but it created the image in their mind is going somewhere. If he just disappeared, I think that would be lacking this element of going somewhere. We have seen him going somewhere. And now Jesus told them, I'm going somewhere in my father's home. That's where I'm going. And I'm going to prepare a place. And from there, I'm coming back. And I will take you because you belong to me because you're very intimate to me because you love me because you believe in me I'm going to take you and we will all be together there it's wonderful that's our faith that's your faith that's what you believe that's what is going to happen it's very simple isn't it but at the same time it's so glorious 
when you, when you realize what happened, what's going on, that Jesus showed them he's going to another place and he is going uh, to come back. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. The important thing in this way is that Jesus says, I am the way before their eyes. The way is Jesus. The destination is getting to that place where the Father is and Jesus is going. That's your goal of your life. That's your pilgrimage. That's your journey of faith. That's the adventure you're in right now. And Hebrew, it's not in the text here, but let me just read it. We have a high priest who sat down in the place of honor besides the throne of the majestic God in heaven. There he ministers in the heavenly tabernacle, the true place of worship that was built by the Lord and not by human hands. That's where he is. And that's where we are going. The tabernacle on earth is just an image, a shadow of the reality that is there. Jesus is there. In Revelation, I was thinking about that, but I did not have time to really uh, read more and give more, more details, but it just came to my mind as I was on the way to church this morning. In Revelation and in Second Peter, heaven and earth disappear. When the glory of God, when we will be ready to reach that place of the majestic God in heaven, the heavenly tabernacle, when we will be ready to get there, the world as we know it, which is value and is look and everything, the art, the heaven and earth disappear. And only thing that stays there and our focus is on is the glory of God and what's happening there. What's happening here is finished. The new Jerusalem, the new earth, the new heaven has come and the rest has passed. So I think that's why when I think we don't realize it because we, we live in this world, we, we communicate in this world, we, we feel, we touch, we, we belong to this world with our human body. But when we will be in the glory of God, this will disappear. That's what it says in First Corinthians chapter 15, the mortal will become immortal, the corruptible will take a corruptible, blood, flesh and blood cannot go there cannot comprehend another place in Corinthians says these things these spiritual things of God the human mind cannot really grasp it but as Jesus is giving us illustrations and the New Testament gives us more we we begin to have an idea of what we are going amen, amen. can I stop now because I want to leave you on that because if I go to somewhere else it's like it's going to break this and we will miss the, the magic or the glory of this moment here. Amen? Amen. Would you please stand? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord.